hope that you're doing well. I know it's been a long time since my last video. I apologize for going missing for so long, but I've been really busy this month working on my shop. I just launched a new spring collection, so there was just a lot of work to do with that, which I was really excited to do, but unfortunately, I didn't have time to make YouTube videos, but I am excited to be back. I hope that you're doing okay, even with everything going on in the world. I know everything is just kind of weird and uncertain right now, and you've probably been stuck inside like I have for quite a while now, so I hope you're doing okay. But I'm excited to be back making YouTube videos again. Because I've been in the midst of working on my shop, as you can see, probably a little bit behind me, my desk is kind of messy because I am shipping lots of orders and getting all of my new stationery out. And I was just thinking that it would be perfect to talk about starting an online shop because if you guys have been following me for a while, you know that I don't just do YouTube, I also design stationery. And that's a big part of my work and my job. And I wanna share how I can help you start your own business or start selling your own art if that's what you're interested in. So this video is just going to be full of tips on how to start your own online shop and how to start selling your art. So I'm dividing this video into two parts just to make it easier um, for you to understand the flow. So part one, I'm going to kind of explain my story and how I started my shop. And then part two, I'm going to give you all the tips. I asked on Instagram for questions and I'm gonna answer some of your questions and just talk about more of the details of how you can start your own online shop. I hope that I can help you out with this video because I remember how overwhelming it is in the beginning when you want to start a business but you just have no idea where to even begin. You don't have any resources. You probably have very little money to start with. That's where I was at least. So if you're there, I'm hoping that this video will give you some tips to get started and I'm hoping I can explain my process and the things that helped me along the way. So let's start with my story and how I started my business. So I actually first started selling things in the autumn of 2016. I was in college and I really wanted to start a sticker shop. I had had this idea for so long and I didn't have any resources at all. I barely had any money. I didn't have a sticker machine or anything. So I actually started by designing a few stickers and cutting them out by hand and selling them in packs on my Etsy shop. And that didn't really work out for me. I actually didn't sell anything at all, which was disappointing at the time, but it was for the best because then I just took a step back and started refocusing on really what I wanted to do. Um, but that's, that's where I began, was having a failed sticker launch um, in the autumn of 2016. I was just so busy with college, I decided to put that on pause and then when the semester was over, I was going to refocus on my sticker shop. So for Christmas that year, I asked my parents for a silhouette machine, which if you don't know, that's a machine that can cut stickers, cut like sticker sheets. Um, so I knew that I needed that so I could make like professional looking stickers. Um, so they gave that to me for Christmas and then I had just decided that by February of 2017, I was gonna open my sticker shop. And I spent the entire month of January designing stickers, working on my branding, everything that goes into starting a shop. And I launched it at the beginning of February. And I think that I got a couple sales my first week, but really not much, if any at all. I, at the time, I didn't have a social media following. I didn't really have a customer base, so it makes sense that I didn't really sell anything. Um, but that's where I got my start. So I made a plan for myself. I knew that I needed to find my customers and to do that, I needed to be on social media. So I told myself I was going to post on YouTube every single week and Instagram. So those are the social media platforms I really focused on and that's what I attribute to growing my shop was working on growing my social media following because that's where I was able to find a community of people who were interested in what I was making and they would become my customers. So honestly, in the beginning, my designs weren't that great. I wasn't in love with my products and what I was making because I had this vision in my head of what I wanted to make, but I just 
couldn't quite make it yet. I didn't have the skills, but I knew that I just had to keep making things in order to get better. So I let myself make designs that I wasn't totally happy with because I knew as I kept doing that further down the line, I would get better and better and they would become what I was envisioning in my head. I think a lot of people get stuck here where they want to sell their art, but they feel like they're not good enough yet. So then they put it off and wait thinking that maybe there's going to be just one day where all of a sudden they have all of the art skills in the world and that's just not going to happen. You're always going to be improving and you're always in a way going to be unsatisfied with your work. So you just have to start where you are with the skills that you have and trust that as you keep making art, you are going to get better and your style will improve. So for the next several months, I honestly didn't make that many sales in my shop. I think over the first six months, I maybe made 15 or 20 sales, if that. It wasn't a lot, and honestly, I was a little discouraged, but I knew that my shop wasn't going to instantly be successful. This was something I needed to grow and work at every single day consistently in order to make it into what I wanted it to be. So I kept working on my social media. I kept posting on YouTube and on Instagram and I grew my customer base that way because people were interested in what I was making, the content that I was creating, and they naturally went over to my shop and that's how I started to grow my shop. So it was almost a year and a half later, around the summer of 2018, that I finally reached my first goal or my first milestone, which was 1,000 sales in my Etsy shop and I honestly could not believe that I had reached that. It did take over a year for me to reach that milestone but I was so excited and it was at that point that I decided to move on from Etsy and open my own website which you guys have seen today. I moved to Shopify and I was really nervous about leaving Etsy just because I didn't know if my customers would move from Etsy to my website. I didn't know if they would trust my own website because Etsy has that name that everybody knows. So I was a little nervous about that, but I really wanted to have my own website. It had always been my dream to have my own brand that I own and I didn't want it to be associated with Etsy. So that's why I moved and it ended up working out well for me. I continued to work on social media so that I was putting out regular content and I was able to make my website into exactly what I wanted it to be. And of course, my art improved a lot over that time period as well because I was consistently making new things and learning new skills and getting closer to making the things that I was envisioning in my head. So you just have to remind yourself that this is a process. You're not gonna be perfect overnight. You're not going to be able to create everything you wanna create right away. But if you let yourself have the time you need to go on that journey and go through that process, you will come out of it making better art than when you started. So that's my story about how I started my shop. Now I wanna give you some tips and answer your questions about how to sell art and start your own online shop. So before we get into the questions, I just want to give you my number one tip, and that is just start now. Don't wait. Don't put it off. Don't spend months planning. You're never going to know everything. You'll never have a roadmap to starting an online business or to selling art. You just need to start now and figure it out as you go because there's always going to be questions. You just have to take them as they come and figure it out and know that you have the ability to figure anything out that comes your way. You just need to start by making art, which you probably are already doing, and then you'll decide on the platform that you want to sell your art on, and then you figure out how to take photos of your art, and then you figure out how to ship everything. and. All of these things will come, but please don't try to have everything figured out before you get started. You're going to make mistakes along the way, and that's okay. Let yourself make mistakes, but know that you can figure it all out, and everything will fall into place as it needs to. So now, let's get into your questions. Like I said, I asked on Instagram for you guys to submit any questions you have about how to start an online store. So I've gathered together the most asked questions, and that's what I'm going to be answering right now. I will have timestamps in the description if you want to jump to a specific topic. 
So this is probably the most asked question because it's the biggest unknown. Like how, how do you know how to start an online store if you haven't done it yet? Um, obviously, like I said, my number one tip was just to get started and figure it out as you go. And um, that is true, but I will tell you a little bit more about how to get started. I would recommend that you have a little bit of money saved up. You don't need to have a ton of money to open an online store. I had very little, but you do need to have something to work with. Once you have a little bit of money saved up, you can budget that and decide how you're going to use that in your business, whether you need to buy supplies to make your products or maybe you need to pay for your website or pay for shipping materials or whatever it is. Etsy is a great option when you're first starting out since it's free and you don't have to pay to make a website. This is really the part that you have to figure out what is going to work best for you. So maybe if you don't have a lot of money, you could try selling digital items like prints or printables or things like that and save up money from your digital sales and then you can put that money back into your business and start selling physical products. Starting a business is just like creating art where you're starting with essentially nothing and building it into something. For me personally, the expenses that I had when I first got started were basic supplies like sticker paper, packaging materials, uh, shipping materials like uh, mailers, things like that. I spent as little as possible because I didn't have a lot and I bought very small quantities of everything just because I didn't know how much I was gonna sell. So save up whatever you can before you start your business, but know that you will have to spend a little bit upfront. The second question is what platform should you use to sell your art or open an online store? As I mentioned earlier, I started on Etsy and I think that's a great first step if you don't have a lot of money to put into your business up front or if you don't have a lot of customers yet or a lot of people following you. I think Etsy is great because you don't have to spend a lot to use Etsy. First of all, it's basically free to start a shop. Um, you do have to pay a listing fee per item that you or per product that you put on Etsy, but it's very minimal. And then whenever you actually make a sale, they do take a small percentage. But if you don't make any sales, you don't have to pay anything. So that's why I think Etsy is a great option if you're first getting started. And then once you have a customer base or a steady stream of orders, you could consider moving to your own website that's hosted by a platform like Shopify or Squarespace. I currently use Shopify for my website and I love it so much. It does have a monthly subscription fee that you have to pay. So that's why I think that maybe it's not the best place to start with because you don't want to pay for your website if you're not making any sales. But look into all the different shop platforms and their fees and everything and decide what would be best for you. The next question I got is, how do you find your customers and actually start making sales? So the answer to this is honestly social media. That's how marketing is done nowadays. You have to have a presence online in order to find your customers, especially, I mean, obviously if you have an online store, you have to market yourself online. My advice is to pick one or two social media platforms that you want to focus on and make the best content that you can for those platforms. I personally started on YouTube and Instagram. That's still obviously what I do and I love it, but pick whatever platform works for you. Share unique and creative content that isn't just trying to promote whatever you're selling because I think people can tell right away when they're just being marketed to. You want to create a genuine connection with people and you want to create content that engages them and makes them interested in you, not just makes them want to immediately go buy something. I've always just tried to make videos or online content that I personally would want to see, something that I would click on. So I love art tutorials, I love sharing inspiration with you guys and just giving you whatever knowledge I can and sharing that with you because that's what I like to see from my favorite creators. You don't want your content to just be one giant ad, so make fun things that you would watch yourself and then let your audience naturally become your customers. Okay, next, so many of you guys had questions about the legal side of running a business. Taxes, finances, bookkeeping, all of those questions. So let's talk about that. So 
obviously I am not an expert in any of this. I'm not an accountant, I'm not a lawyer, I can't give you any actual legal advice, but I can give you a starting point because I know how overwhelming all of this is in the beginning when you just have no idea where to get started. But I will say just please do your own research because like I said, I'm not an expert and I don't know everything that you need to do for your business. Okay, so getting started with the legal stuff, how to make your business legitimate. Obviously, I can only speak for the United States because that's where I live, but I would say the first place that you should start is by going to your state's Department of Revenue website. They will have a list of all the requirements that you need to do to start your own business. Whatever business licenses or applications you need to fill out, they will let you know. So they are the best resource to get started. Every state is different, so you have to go to your specific state because they have different rules and different applications. You'll need to decide what business structure you're going to be. So if you're starting out really small like I did and it's just going to be you, then you'll probably just be a sole proprietorship. This means that you are the sole owner of your business. Any money that your business makes, any profits, losses, debts, anything is all going to be under your name. It will be your responsibility. Any money that your business makes will be filed as your personal income tax. I will leave a link to a government website with more information about this just so you can read more because like I said, I'm not a lawyer. I don't know the specifics, but at least now you have a place to get started. Your county or city that you live in might have even more requirements for starting a business. You might have to get like a business license for your specific city. So also look into that, but all that information should be on your state's Department of Revenue website. So that's really why I tell you to go there because they will have everything that you need to know. As for taxes, if you are a sole proprietor, which you probably are, then you are just going to file taxes as usual. When tax season comes along, whatever money your business made is just filed as your personal income. But this means that you have to save money for taxes throughout the year because unlike a regular job where they take out taxes from your paycheck, it's your responsibility to pay the taxes on whatever money your business makes. So for me personally, any money that comes into my business, I save 30% of it for taxes. So if you're self-employed, you're supposed to pay quarterly taxes throughout the year. So there are four tax deadlines throughout the year. And the idea is that each deadline you pay a quarter of what you're estimated to owe in taxes. That way, when April comes around and you file for taxes, you don't owe a ton of money. You should have been paying it throughout the year. Now for bookkeeping. This is probably my least favorite part of running my business. I love the creative side, but I hate the paperwork and the numbers side and all of that. Um, but if you're self-employed, this is just something that you have to do. It comes with the territory. So what's been working for me is actually just to have basic spreadsheets on my computer to keep track of all the numbers. And I just make sure to update these spreadsheets every single month. So I have a spreadsheet for my business income and I have a spreadsheet for my business expenses, things that um, like supplies, things that I spend money on that could potentially be written off on my taxes. I use the app Capital to save money for taxes and this isn't sponsored at all, this is just the app that I use, but they link to your bank account and you can set rules to take out a certain percentage of whatever money goes into your bank account. Um, so for example, I have a rule set for any deposit that goes into my bank account Capital takes out 30% and puts it into a savings account. So that's what works for me. I don't even have to think about taking the money out. It just takes it out for me so that I can save that and know that I'm going to have enough to pay for taxes. Your specific bank might actually be able to do this already on your bank's app. So check that out, see if you can do that. And if not, maybe see if capital would work for you. So that's all the legal and financial talk I'm going to give you. I know that I didn't give you that many specifics, but you're gonna to have to do the research for your specific business depending on where you live and what you're doing. Um, but hopefully I was able to give you a starting off point because I know that it's really overwhelming and it's kind of scary because you don't wanna do anything wrong, especially with like taxes and the government, that's kind of scary. Um, but don't worry, you can figure this out and I hope that I gave you a good place to get started with all of that. And the last topic that I'm going to talk about is how to ship your products.
You guys had so many questions about the shipping process, everything from how to buy a shipping label to what shipping materials to use or how to deal with the post office, all these things. So I'm going to try to answer your questions as best as possible. First, what are you selling and how are you going to get it safely to your customer? Can it be mailed in a flat cardboard envelope or can it be mailed in a padded mailer or do you need a box? That will just depend on your specific product. Okay, once you've decided on how you're going to package your item, then you have to decide what shipping provider you're going to use. Unless you're shipping something really heavy or really large, you'll probably just want to go with USPS. And of course, this is specific to the United States because I'm not sure what shipping providers there are in other countries. So you can look up a shipping calculator online and estimate the cost of shipping for your products based on how much they weigh in your packaging and then you know how much to charge your customers for shipping. Now you don't need to go to the post office to buy shipping labels. I had a couple questions about this. You can actually buy shipping labels online. So if you're using Etsy, you can buy shipping labels directly through Etsy. You'll go through their process. They'll explain how to do that. Um, if you use Shopify like I do, you can buy shipping labels directly on there. I believe the same is for Squarespace or there are shipping apps online. For example, I recently started using Shippo and that integrates really well into Shopify, which is why I love it. Um, but I use Shippo to buy all of my shipping labels and it's great, I love it. You can look that up if you're interested. So you buy your shipping label, you print it out, you put it on your package and then you can drop that off in a mailbox or you can drop it off at the post office. So I'm just going to walk you through my process for shipping orders because it's kind of confusing if you don't actually see it being done. So let's go through my process. First, I open the order on my shipping application, which like I said, I use Shippo. I just do one order at a time and I will start by packaging all of the items. Then I weigh the package. I input the weight and the dimensions of my package into my shipping app and I purchase the label. Then I print out the label and put it on my package. And then I drop off the package at the post office. So I hope that this answered your basic questions about how to start an online store. There's so much more information that I could give you, but I just can't fit it all into one video. So if there are more topics that you want me to talk about, let me know in the comments and maybe I can turn this into a series and make more videos about specific topics that relate to starting an online business or selling art. I wanna make another video sharing all of my tools and supplies that I use in my business. So let me know if that's something that you would be interested in seeing. I hope that this video was helpful for you. I'm so excited for those of you who are inspired and motivated to start your own online store and I'm just happy to help however I can. So let me know if there's anything else that I can share my knowledge on. But thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you're staying healthy and safe and I will see you again soon with a new video.